Good morning. Thank you for joining me today on this Wednesday morning that feels like a Friday morning to a lot of us that are taking, making advantage of uh, Friday and making it a big long weekend. So what I will focus on today is I'll show you the investment performance uh, of all of the life stage portfolios to 31 August. And then in addition to that, we have some very interesting data to show you what happens if you switch your investment portfolio too often. So I will show you the long-term impact and then just caution against switching portfolios too often. So we need to remember why we are all here as consultants, as investment consultants, and ultimately the members of the fund. We manage these investment portfolios and some of you that are management committee members, you take on that responsibility for the members of the fund, but ultimately our mission and vision is to enable life-changing and dignified retirement outcomes and to build a more financially secure South Africa. So the portfolios that I will talk through today are the life stage portfolios. Now, whether for your fund you have chosen the skeleton range, which is uh, passive, the passive and active blend that we have, which is called the signature range or the synergy range, all of them have exactly the same glide path to retirement, meaning that you will be invested in a more aggressive portfolio um, if you are younger and as members um, get older and closer to retirement, uh, from six years before retirement, we start transitioning members to more and more conservative portfolios. So the older you get, the more conservative portfolio um, you will be invested in. Having said that, this is the default and members can at any stage opt out and switch their portfolio to something that's more suitable. And this, the switching um, that I will be speaking about is specifically uh, switching too often or switching uh, potentially at the wrong time. But we'll get to those um, interesting data slides a little bit later on. So as I mentioned, the younger members will be invested in a more aggressive portfolio. And of course, um, the higher the return that we expect the portfolio, the more risk the portfolio needs to take. And therefore, the, our signature skeleton and synergy 70 portfolios that have about 70% allocated to equities, that's local and global equities. Because of that equity allocation, the risk of the portfolio is higher, but over the long term, you can expect um, a higher return. And the older members that would be in our 40 ranges, so the signature skeleton or synergy 40 range, um, the portfolios have more bonds, more cash, more of your safer type of um, asset classes. And for that reason, the risk is much lower. So the risk is the risk of capital loss, but then the return expectations of those portfolios is lower as well. So how have the funds performed to 31 August. So it's always nice to look at the performance um, over the long term. And the slide, all, all of the lines look a little bit busy, but if you could just focus on the ones in color, but essentially what we have included on the slide is the long-term performance of the three um, more aggressive portfolios, of the 70 portfolios. And the black line is a very well accepted benchmark for Regulation 28 portfolios, and that is the Global Large Manager Watch Median. Now what that is, is the median performance of the managers that we have in the table at the bottom. So all of these managers, such as Alan Gray, Coronation, Prudential, these are all very large, very successful asset management firms in South Africa. They are all single managers, so it's not a multi-managed portfolio. If you invest with Alan Gray, it's just Alan Gray, but um, they have long-term track records and um, they're considered to be the largest um, and most successful in this space. Uh, from a single manager perspective. And the median performance of that manager is considered to be a very well accepted benchmark. So if your portfolio can beat that median manager performance, then you've done well. And what we can see from the slide is that um, all three of our uh, default ranges have actually outperformed this um, global large manager watch medium. 
What we also see, and this I'll talk to a little bit later on, is that the growth of these portfolios is not smooth. It is a bumpy ride. Of course, we are investing um, in local and global equities, and equity prices do uh, move up and down, but over the long term, um, the portfolios have been growing. So just a reminder on the strategic asset allocation of these portfolios. So the reason why, um, as I mentioned, the 70 portfolios are considered to be higher risk is because you'll see from the slide that the allocation to equities is higher. And as you get older, um, you'll move to the 60, the 50 and the 40 portfolios, you'll see that the allocation to equities is smaller and then the bonds, income and money market allocations become larger. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but just as a reminder of um, how these portfolios are constructed, the signature range you'll see has a blend between active and passive. So if we just look at the equity managers, for example, there is a portion that's uh, passively managed, and that's the Signia Swix tracker. And then we also have included um, a few active managers such as ABEX 91 and Coronation. Likewise, in the bond space, it's a blend of active and passive investment management, and on the international side, um, it's passive. The skeleton range is our low-cost passive range, so what you'll see here is that it's just uh, passively managed. You don't see any of the um, active managers such as Coronation and Alan Gray um, in the skeleton portfolios. And the synergy range is where the local portion is managed by some of these very well-known large managers in South Africa, and the global portion is exactly the same in all three ranges. So the local portion, which is 70% of the portfolios um, in the Synergy 70 fund, is managed by Alan Gray, Coronation 91, and Prudential. For those of you that aren't aware, 91 is Investec Asset Management. They recently rebranded and now they call themselves 91. So how have the funds performed? It's always look good to look at the absolute performance, so to look at the actual number over a certain period, but it's also good to look at it against peers. So what we have included here is the Alexander Forbes survey. So these surveys are prepared independently and they compare like for like portfolios. So what we're looking at on this slide is the low equity portfolios. So all of these portfolios have a similar allocation to equities, so they all have roughly 40% in equities. And what we can see is that over the one year, the skeleton fund has been the best performing, and it has given us 9.1%. So the funds have all done, and I'm speaking about all of the signature, I mean the Signia funds, so the skeleton signature and synergy, they have all done really well against peers across all periods. And importantly, over the long term, so consistency is important. You can see that over the 10 years, um, the signature and skeleton funds have done the best against all peers, and these returns are also annualized. Likewise, in the low to medium equity space, so in these portfolios, roughly half of the portfolio is invested in equities. And you'll see that um, the Signia portfolios have outperformed um, all of the competitors in this space. And again, that importance of consistency to look at it over a seven and a 10 year period. This the 60 funds, a slightly higher allocation to equity, and again, um, very, very good performance from all of the portfolios across all periods. And most importantly, and why I say most importantly, is that our data shows us that most members follow the life stage model. They default into the, the model that the management committee has chosen for them. And for that reason, they will be defaulted in the uh, 70 portfolios, be it signature skeleton or synergy and they will spend the majority of their working life in these portfolios. So it's really important that these portfolios are structured well, that they are competitive relative to peers, and that they achieve what they set out to achieve. 
And as you can see, um, over the one year, the Signature 70 Fund has been the top performing. Um, and um, across all periods, all of these portfolios have done very, very well against peers. And very importantly, to again, look at it over the long term, over seven and over 10 years. Now, when I said that these returns are annualized, what it means if you look at it over 10 years, for example, had you been invested in the Signature 70 Fund over the last 10 years, you would have um, seen an annualized return of 12.5%, meaning that um, your return would have been 12.5% per year for the last 10 years. What you'll also note is that over the longer term, um, there are less competitors in the space, so not everybody has a 10-year track record, and that's why the survey um, appears and appears to be uh, comparing less portfolios over seven and 10 years time. And then lastly, um, from a survey perspective, it's always interesting to have a look at how our multi-asset and multi-managed portfolios have done against single managers. Now we know with single managers um, that no single manager will outperform over every uh, market environment. Not every market of environment is suitable for the investment process and philosophy of every manager. So we'll see that over the one year, uh, Ford has been the top performer. Um, giving us 12.6%, but over the three years, it is further down, um, giving us only 5.9. So this is exactly what I, I mean, is FERT has a certain style. Uh, typically, single managers um, have uh, you know, styles that will only perform in a certain market environment, and you cannot expect that market environment to continue. And against all of these single managers, our portfolios have done really, really well. And uh, what's really interesting to see is that over the seven and 10 years that they have actually outperformed um, all of the single managers in the surveys. So I rest assured the members in the funds that uh, you consult to um, have been invested in portfolios that have done really, really well against peers. And as I spoke about risk earlier on, and risk being the risk of capital loss, the higher the risk, the higher the return, as I have said many times. But when comparing to other peers in the space, what you wouldn't want is a portfolio that uh, performed um, you know, worse than another one, but has taken on a similar or even more risk. So essentially the way to read this chart is for every level of risk and risk is on the horizontal axis. So for every level of risk, you want the highest, the top performing portfolio. So if we look at the Signature 70 fund, for example, it has taken on about 9% of risk, but it has also provided you um, the top return. Anyone underneath that has taken on the same amount of risk, but they haven't delivered the return. So from this chart, what we can see is that all of the portfolios, um, the skeleton range, the signature range, and the synergy range, they have really done well from a risk and return perspective against um, similar portfolios in the market. Okay, so that was on performance. The performance um, has been great despite the very volatile market environment. And I mentioned that we have prepared some very interesting data to show you the impact of switching your portfolios too often. Now, as I started this presentation, um, I spoke about you know, our passions and the reasons why we are all here and why we consult to retirement funds. It really is to secure that um, you know, healthy retirement uh, from a financial perspective for our members. But you know, the portfolios can only do so much. The human behavior element becomes really important when you provide members with member investment choice and they're able to switch their investment portfolios. Now, before I show you the data, I wanted to show you a very long term chart of the JSC All Share Index. So this chart tracks the All Share Index, which is um, you know, a good representation of um, the South African listed stocks. And you can see that from 1995 right up until 31 August 2020, uh, the JSC has grown a lot, but what we can see 
just like we saw with the performance of our portfolios against the benchmark, is that it's not a smooth journey. So it does grow, but there's a lot of bumps in the road um, ahead. And some of those bumpy periods that are very prominent on this chart is um, if you have a look at 2008, and we all remember in 2008, there was the global financial crisis and markets uh, were hurting um, everywhere locally and globally and what we can see is that big dip but you know the market does recover after that and that period often feels very uncomfortable to members if you happen to receive um your annual benefit statement at that stage uh, or members are logging on to the online system where they're able to check their value on a daily basis or a weekly basis however often they look it can be a very uncomfortable period what it feels like in those periods is that you're contributing you're putting money into these funds and every time you look at your um, asset value if you look at it very often it looks like money is being lost but what's important is that over the long term, there is a definite upward trajectory and the funds uh, will grow um, over the longer term. And then you see a similar very bumpy pattern closer to the end of the chart. And this is really the volatility that we've seen this year. This year, 2020 has been like no other. Um, the minute the global pandemic spread across the, uh, spread across the globe, we've seen investors become very, very nervous and say, out of um, all assets, global assets, local assets, um, equities. Um, investors just wanted their money out of the markets. And when investors pull their money out of the markets, um, the prices of shares drop, and that's why you see um, this bumpy journey. But markets have since recovered, and now we, um, you know, we almost got comfortable at a new normal, and the markets were doing mostly well, and that's locally and globally. And now, over the last week or so, we again starting to see a lot of a lot more volatility in the markets, and this is really due to concerns again that Europe um, is seeing a second wave of infection. Will they see more restrictions? Will we see hard lockdowns and all of these things that affect economic growth, the profits of companies. So these are the concerns that we're seeing now. And it's important to note that volatility is here to stay, at least for the short to medium term until we get out of this, um, you know, almost lockdown world that we find ourselves in. Uh, so volatility is there to continue, but this volatility also creates a lot of opportunity. So I want to introduce you to a concept called RAND cost averaging. Now, RAND cost averaging is an investment technique that's best applied when um, things in the world become a little bit uncertain or bumpy. And what we're experiencing right now is exactly uh, you know, that type of scenario. The world is uncertain. We are not sure if, um, you know, the vaccine will be available um, early enough to uh, you know have the world tick along the way we used to know it and as i mentioned we're seeing uh, more volatility second wave of the infections and all of that causes nervousness in the markets and when investors are nervous they pull their money out and that's when you see um, the value of a share drop but now with rand cost averaging the opportunity really is, is that with the very same amount of money, you can purchase more shares or bonds or instruments, investment instruments for exactly the same amount. So to give you a practical example, and I've included an example here on the slides, but members contribute the same amount to a retirement fund. Of course, members can increase and decrease their contributions in certain aspects, depending on the rules of the specific fund. And of course, as a member's salary rises, their percentage of their salary, so as a RAND amount, you could be contributing more. But for the purposes of this example, um, you know, if we look at a member and their salary hasn't changed, and when everything was, you know, relatively normal in January 2020, they were contributing a certain amount to their retirement fund every month. Then February happens, March happens, the markets are falling. That member, if that member still has his or her job, is still continuing to contribute that same random amount. So for the purposes of the example, I've used 
an example of you can spare a thousand rand every month to buy shares. But you can also think of it as your monthly contribution to a retirement fund that we not only buy shares with, we also buy bonds and other instruments, but to keep it simple. With that thousand rand, uh, we are able to buy 10 shares of company X because company X um, so share price is 100 rand. But now there has been market volatility and due to the pandemic, investors have become um, nervous. And what they do is, you know, there's now lockdowns everywhere. They might be panicked and say, you know what, although I own all of these shares, I'm going to sell them because I would just rather have my money in my bank account or whatever people's reasons may be. As they sell all of these shares, the share prices um, start falling because there's less demand for these shares. People are sellers and not enough people are buying that share and that's why the price drops. Now, after all of this volatility, company X is now 50 rand. Now, you can still spare a thousand rand every month, or you, if we look at the retirement fund example, you're still contributing the same rand amount every month. Now, you can buy that very same share for 50 rand instead of 100 rand, meaning that with your thousand rand, you can now purchase 20 shares of company X. Now, what happens is that when the market recovers, you now hold a lot more shares of company X, and when the value of that company grows, you will receive more profits because you have more shares. So looking at that chart again, every little dip along the curve is an opportunity to buy shares or to buy the index at a much lower price. So this is the concept of rand cost averaging and as uncomfortable as it may feel at times and as uncomfortable as members get, and we know this from the queries and from um, you know, the conversations that we have, that whenever markets are falling and members have a look at their asset values or their uh, retirement fund savings, very often they do panic and the natural reaction is to say i don't want to be invested in an aggressive portfolio i rather want to switch out and have my money in cash cash unfortunately will not have those inflation beating returns over the long term and that's why it's not an ideal investment for a long-term perspective in a retirement fund so we crunch some numbers to show you what the impact would be if you just had to miss you know, some of the best performing days um, of the portfolios. Now, what's important to note is that the best performing days and the worst days in the markets are not predictable. Nobody can know what will happen in the markets tomorrow. So some, and sometimes the very best day follows the very worst day. So if you look on the right hand side, um, towards the bottom, we've shown you the top 10 highest daily returns and this is specific to the signature 40 portfolios and what you'll see is that most of them are actually now in 2020. Why is that? It's because we've seen so much volatility and the best days as I mentioned often follow the worst days in the markets so once markets have fallen coming off a very low base if you have a good growth day um, you know it can be one of the best days in the markets. So had you invested just a hundred rand once um, in this portfolio in 2009 and you just missed one of the best days in the market the impact would be that had you been all in um, your hundred rand would have grown to 271 rand and just by missing one of the best days so if you switched out of your portfolio you missed out on that one good day you actually um, your portfolio would have only grown to 262 rand now it's important to note that when you consider monthly contributions, this effect can even be wider. What we're considering here is um, the growth on a 100 rand investment. Now, very realistically, if a member panicked specifically now in 2020, and if we look at the top 10 highest daily returns, they likely would have missed out on, let's say maybe five of the uh, best days in the markets, and we can see the detrimental um, effect on that portfolio. And visually, you can see it on this chart. So had you been all in, yes, you would have gone through that very sharp dip um, in the first quarter of 2020, but the funds have recovered, and you can see that 
dark blue line is had you been all in and you can see the lighter lines as if you missed some of the best days in the market. Now these charts become even um, more uh, visually and also the numbers even there's even a higher divergence the higher equity allocation that you have so we did the work for the signature 50 funds so slightly more aggressive and you can see that the difference between um you know being all in and missing some of the best days becomes even higher Likewise, for the Signature 60 portfolio and the Signature 70 portfolio, which is likely where um, a lot of members are invested, um, you can see that, um, if, especially on the chart, the difference between being all in and let's say less one of the best days or less five of the best days, we can see the divergence in where your portfolios would have landed up. Over here as well, if we have to look at the top 10 highest daily returns, we can see that most of them were in 2020, coming off lower bases, and of course the growth in those portfolios um, straight after that. We also prepared the um, same data analysis on the skeleton funds. So what I'm showing you here is the skeleton 40 fund, the skeleton 50 fund, our pause on skeleton 70. So if we look at the Skeleton 70 fund, again, the very dark line at the top, had you been all in, yes, you would have gone through that uncomfortable period, but you would have also enjoyed that recovery. Had you panicked, switched out into cash, um, the outcome would have been very, very different. And in the synergy range, the charts look like the divergence is even bigger, but just to um, you know, point to the charts on the left hand side, you'll see that those portfolios, um, the data starts from 2018. This is real data that we used. So the performance track record is shorter and that's why it almost looks like we've zoomed into the graph um, and you can see the divergence is much larger. So again, this is for the Synergy 40 fund. So so the least aggressive of the synergy range. So if we look at the 50, the 60, and then if I pause and focus on the 70, you can see that there's a big difference uh, between riding, you know, the ups and downs of the market and that panicking and switching at the very wrong time. Now, when switching your portfolios, there is no right time to switch. The best you know, I think to do is to switch your portfolios um, only if, you know, the current portfolio doesn't work for you for whatever reason, but keeping that long term goal in mind. So if you know that you will, you know, retire in South Africa and you know, you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s and you're only retiring in your 60s. Yes, it can be uncomfortable, but it's important to be um, in the more aggressive portfolios. So in the 70 portfolios or in the single manager portfolios, if that is uh, what's more suitable to your personal needs. But it's important to be in an inflation beating portfolio so that you can achieve um, the goals that you have set for your own retirement. So this data is very, very interesting and it visually shows us um, that, you know, if we do panic, we often um, are crystallizing our losses. So if you do switch out of your portfolio when the market is down, you essentially by switching out what you're doing is you're selling shares that you could have bought at 100, you're now selling them at 50. So you're losing money, you're crystallizing those losses. And when things go back to normal and when markets start recovering, and we already have seen a recovery, we just started to see more volatility again recently. But when markets recovered, that is often when um, investors members they feel ready to go back into the markets again because it's not this panic red that you see on the news every night and essentially what members are doing at that stage is they are buying the market when the market is expensive so over the long term the best outcome would be to ride the volatility stay invested and remember that concept of rand cost averaging 
that when the markets are down, as much as it's uncomfortable to look at your statements or to log on online, just know that it's specifically in those periods of time when you are able to actually accumulate a lot more shares, a lot more instruments in your portfolio, and you're purchasing them at a much lower cost. So with that, I want to thank you for your time this morning. Uh, for those of you that are taking Friday off, um, I hope that you have a lovely long weekend. And if there's any questions, we will respond to them in writing afterwards. Thank you very much.